I still remember the first time I walked up to Liberty Hill, shocked when I came over the crest and saw the camas in bloom. You're right in town, yet here is this gorgeous series of meadows covered in wildflowers, beautiful streams cutting through a rocky butte, birds calling from the trees, reptiles everywhere. I didn't think the Willamette Valley had places like this anymore. In 1806, Meriwether Lewis saw Camus and said, From the color of its bloom, it resembles lakes of fine, clear water. So complete is this deception, on first sight I could have sworn it was water. This is Liberty Hill Bluff, the last pristine Camus field in northwest Oregon and the best of its kind west of the Cascades. These fields once covered St. Helens Buttes and significant portions of the Columbia River Basin in Willamette Valley. Their bulbs were a food staple for the Chinook Indians, who tended them carefully but development, agriculture, and mining have eliminated almost all the grassland. And every inch of this particular meadow we're flying over will be destroyed in the first stage of Knife River's mining plan. The irreplaceable biodiversity of the meadows goes far beyond Camas. When those purple blossoms subside, they reveal an unparalleled variety of native wildflowers and wetlands flora. 288 species of plants have been recorded on Liberty Hill, 86 of which are not recorded anywhere else in Columbia County. Some of the rarest include Orbic List 1 and 2 species like Nettles Larkspur and Small Flower Trillium, but the most impressive aspect is the sheer number of uncommon species. Dozens of the wet meadow wildflowers thriving here are rare in the Willamette Valley, including Oblong Blue Pearls, Spring Gold, Meadow Bird's Foot Trefoil, Western Ladies Tresses, Alaskan Shooting Star, Fringe Loose Strife, Nettles Quillwort, and Texas Toad Flax. Aesthetically, the blooms are a treat for wildflower enthusiasts. With all of these rare flowers mixed into a background of camas, sea blush, lilies, irises, and columbine. There is nothing else like this in Columbia County, and outside of perhaps Saddle Mountain, there's no place like it west of the Cascades. These wildflowers feed at least 40 species of native bees, several of which are listed as vulnerable or imperiled in Oregon, and likely support dozens of species of butterflies, beetles, and other unique insects. It's backed by over 100 acres of oak woodland making it the largest and most natural meadow and oak complex in our region. Oak itself is an imperiled and critical habitat that has lost close to 99% of its coverage in the Willamette Valley. The wetlands are equally impressive. Vernal pools hold the Oregon fairy shrimp, a vulnerable species known only from a few dozen locations. Streams are thick with native mollusks. The runoff from the bluffs feeds into Dalton Lake, which Bonneville restored just this year to improve juvenile salmon habitat. Fourteen reptile and amphibian species live in the meadow or surrounding woodland, five of which breed in those vernal pools. Snakes rarely seen in northwest Oregon thrive here, such as the rubber boa that sniffs out small rodents underground, or the western yellow-bellied racer that visually tracks its prey through the grass. The western skinks found in this meadow are only known from one other location in the county, and likely will disappear from the region if the habitat isn't preserved. Close to 100 species of birds have been recorded on Liberty Hill in just a few walks, including 10 Oregon Conservation Strategy species. The meadow provides some of the most critical local habitat for several listed species, such as the olive-sided flycatcher and western bluebird, while the trees support additional strategy species like white-breasted nuthatch and pileated woodpecker. Sometimes the bluff is visited by mountain quail and peregrine falcon. You can spot grazing deer, elk, and brush rabbit in both the meadow and the woods. Raccoons and bobcat hunt small animals along the edge while skunks and weasels probe the undergrowth. The oak woodlands hold the western gray squirrel, another organ conservation strategy species declining in our region. If that oak is allowed to mature, it might support birds otherwise absent in the county, such as acorn woodpecker and Lewis's woodpecker. Knife River claims it will mitigate the 10 acres of wetland it is tearing up, but will they recreate vernal ponds capable of supporting the unique species which rely on this particular geology and pristine condition? Mitigated wetlands were already built directly below these cliffs during a previous construction project, but even after 20 years, they support comparatively little biodiversity. And what good will a few artificial ponds do for the 70 acres of meadow and oak woodland that Knife River will bulldoze? They have no plans to replace that at all, nor could they. They are taking out the most pristine half of the bluff, and the combination of disturbed hydrology, vehicle traffic, constant dust from 50 years of mining operation, and poorly designed mitigation will degrade the remnants severely. Liberty Hill will no longer be the most amazing Camas meadow left in Northwest Oregon, but just another adulterated fragment with patches of Camas here and there. It is the last of its kind, and if they rip it out, there will be no bringing it back. 
We read about the logging that wiped out the ivory-billed woodpecker, or the salt marsh losses that cost us the dusky seaside sparrow, and we are aghast at our short-sightedness. Yet here we are, once again poised to destroy that which cannot be replaced. If we allow a mine to ruin this bluff, then by the next generation, several native plant and animal species will no longer be found within 40 miles in any direction. Children will look at pictures like these, gaze up at the stripped hillside, and wonder how we could have been so reckless. There are other places nearby with more than enough basalt to mine that won't disturb critical habitat. Within 20 years, the USA will likely be utilizing primarily recycled concrete and fill materials in construction projects, just as European cities like Zurich have already transitioned to. There's no justification for Knife River to destroy an irreplaceable habitat merely to fulfill an imagined, projected need that may or may not transpire 50 years from now. Once we thought the world is so big, we could take whatever we wanted from it without consequence. Now we see it disappearing around us. We may forgive previous generations for being naive, for not knowing everything we know. We don't have the same excuse.